Good evening. My name is. Wow. My name is Patricia Lewis Baisden, and I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you to City Council Candidates Night. This has been. Yes, you can clap. This, is being, this night is being given in partnership with the African American Alliance Association, Vallejo Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, Better Vallejo, and the NAACP. We have come together in partnership to uh, provide this night to the community so that you might be informed. We would like to ask you at this time to please turn off your cell phones. Please turn off your cell phones. We do not want any interruptions if possible. We have lots of questions, lots of information to get out to you this evening, and we would not like any interruptions if at all possible. I'm sorry. That's okay. Take your seat. Yes. I have just been reminded also that tonight is being broadcast on our local station, Channel 28, so that our viewers at home can see. At this time, I would like to introduce to some, a few, and present to most our moderator for the evening, she is president of the American Alliance Association. She's vice president of NAACP. She's a very busy, busy lady. That's why I say present to most and introduce to a few. Eva Coley. Good evening. I too want to say thank you for coming. Um, we're going to get down to business. I'm going to give the rules. I'm good at giving the rules. Okay, first of all, I would like to acknowledge um, some people that helped us put this together. You probably can see by their banners up there. They're kind of big, right? They have their banners up. But when I call your organization's name, would you please stand so I can say thank you and African American Alliances, thank you. Would Better Vallejo please stand, members of Better Vallejo? and to the Vallejo branch of the NAACP. And the Vallejo alumni chapter of Delta Sigma Theta. <laughs> and last but not least, I need to thank my committee and my members. African American Alliance, stand, raise your hands, jump up and down. Okay, thank you. We are going to say that we're going to end at 7.30. We have, I'm sorry, 8.30. We're gonna be moving real fast. We are going to try to end at 8.30. Um, the candidates will be given two minutes to introduce themselves. And in that two minutes, you need to tell us about yourself and just in case we don't have time at the end, if you have anything to say as far as a statement, now is the time when you get up to introduce yourself. If we have time, and it looks like everybody's not falling asleep, when it's over, we'll come back and let them give a clothing statement, but we're not promising that right now, okay? Um, you will have two minutes to introduce yourself, and we have some timekeepers. And Foster, would you raise your hand? And Albert, would you raise your hand? They have three little bubs over there. And we'll explain those in a second. Red means you're done. Okay. Red means you're done. Yellow means you're almost done. And green means get started. So grab a breath and get started. Okay, you are, we're gonna ask questions. 
I'm probably going to skip around. Some of you may get the same question, but we got quite a few questions that we think reflect some of the concerns in the community. We kind of asked different organizations to send us questions, and they were good enough to do that. Okay, if, if there's nothing else I can say is don't get mad at me when that red bulb goes off and I say, sorry. Okay, so I'm going to let the candidates introduce themselves. My timekeepers, are you ready? And we will start on with Ms. Sh Candidate Shively. And why don't we just, when she's finished, just keep going, okay? I'm Joanne Shively. I'm a native Vallejoan, lifelong resident. Um, Vallejo has always been my home by choice. I am a retired bank executive and I've worked in Vallejo for most of my career. Not only did I have to learn financial products while working for the bank, but I also had to learn human resources, management, supervision, and customer relations. I have served three terms on the council. In my most recent term, I obtained $2.7 million of general fund loans from the transportation fund, money that was going to be written off. Because of that, the city was able to exit bankruptcy early. In my first term, I recovered over $9.5 million of Marine World debt. It's now known as Six Flags Discovery Kingdom. That was also for the city and the redevelopment agency. Also have championed changes to the charter that require a structurally balanced budget, a general fund reserve policy, and a five-year financial plan. Prior to serving on the council, I've served on several city commissions, uh, the last one being the planning commission. I've also instituted a curb cut program to improve accessibility in Vallejo for people with mobility impairments. And it's not only an improvement for accessibility, it has prevented the city from being sued because we have an ongoing plan in place. Other cities have been sued because they don't have anything. Thank you. On. That's fine. Kenneth Johnson. Good evening. My name is Ronald J. Johnson, Jr. I'm running for the two-year seat on Vallejo City Council. I was born and raised right here in Vallejo and attended Vallejo schools. My family has resided here in this city for a little over 105 years. My great-great-grandfather, Samuel Brown, fought for us in our Civil War. As an emancipated slave, he enlisted in the Union Army in 1865 at the age of 32. He passed away in 1923 and was laid to rest at our own Sunrise Memorial Cemetery located on Sacramento Street right here in Vallejo. My grandfather, Sergeant B. Johnson, Sr., also a longtime resident and businessman of Vallejo, also resides at that same cemetery, having departed us January 3rd of 2012. Mr. Johnson's business, Deluxe Shoes, is still in operation to this day. For over 50 years, he's served our community. He provided training to the youth on how to repair shoes, which one of his trainees is still operating the shop today. For over, uh, excuse me, my grandfather was one of the first African Americans to purchase a commercial property in downtown Vallejo, and he was also the first African American to be on the Economic Development uh, Commission. And I'm here to continue the legacy of these two great men. Service is in my blood, so I welcome the challenges that face our city. We need a councilman with a passionate desire to bring jobs and economic development to the city of Vallejo. And as your councilman, my strengths in organizing and bringing people together will create a climate that will appeal to developers, consultants, contractors, and others in the building community. With the multimodal transportation system already in place on Mare Island, we can develop a port and offload site. I will also preserve open Thank space you. on Mare Thank Island. Thank you. 
Thank you. Good evening. I'm Rosanna Verderaliga. I'm running for the two-year seat on the Vallejo City Council. I am running because I am passionate about Vallejo. I am a 32-year resident with 30 years of volunteer work, management, leadership, and public service experience, including 18 years as an elected member of the Solano County and Vallejo Boards of Education. I will put this experience to work to help rebuild and reshape our city. I'm married to Nasser Aliga, U.S. Army veteran, for 32 years. We've raised three children in Vallejo who attended Vallejo's public schools. As senior manager with Solano County Health and Social Services, with a doctorate in counseling psychology, I am skilled at team building, planning, managing operations, staff, budget, and programs. My community involvement includes active membership with Sroptimus International, Fighting Back Partnership Board, Participatory Budgeting Committee, Vallejo Sister City Association, Filipino Community of Solano County. To rebuild and reshape Vallejo, my priorities are public safety, crime reduction, job creation, economic development, financial stability and recovery, infrastructure road repairs, and community engagement. I will bring consensus building skills and work with the mayor and council members to make Vallejo a great place to live, learn, work, and play. I will bring consensus building skills and rebuild and reshape our city as a business friendly, safe, financially sound, diversity celebrating, vibrant community today and tomorrow. I ask for your vote. Thank you. Good evening. My name is uh, Tony Mapalo, and I'm a resident of uh, Vallejo for less than nine years. Um, I've been uh, a top uh, banking executive for more than 30 years. I have a master's degree in business administration. And uh, I believe uh, my experience and my education would be able to help me in uh, working with the city council in achieving our goals. My main thrust is uh, improving uh, public safety and uh, job creation. I believe I'm capable, trustworthy, and uh, I, I, I have a deep abiding faith in God. With your trust and confidence, I uh, hope and and I'm confident to make Vallejo proud again by the grace of Almighty God. Thank you. My name is Chris Platzer and I'm running for city council. My father was recruited to Huntsville, Alabama, where I was born, to work with Vernon Von Braun on a rocket that put an American on the moon. I am a first-generation Austro-American. We're the Germans with the sense of humor. I was four years old and growing up in the Deep South when on a bloody Sunday, 600 civil rights marchers were beaten with billy clubs by state and local law enforcement on a bridge in Selma, Alabama. My path to Vallejo was probably different than yours, but some of your parents and grandparents came here from the Deep South to provide the labor to build and repair the Navy's ships and subs. I moved here in 94. When the Navy closed Mare Island in 96, I bought a house in Vallejo Heights. Every day I'm reminded that Vallejo is surrounded by water on three sides. I spent 14 years working for Silicon Valley tech companies a profession that I would describe <laughs> as a profession I good to see you. A profession that I would describe as driving at a constant 80 miles an hour 
working 60-hour weeks, and traveling the world. In 2009, I graduated from the California Maritime Academy with a BS in Marine Transportation and as a United States Coast Guard licensed deck officer. I am a member of the Master Mates and Pilots Union, the International Marine Division of the ILA CIL or AFL CIO. I too would like to talk tonight a little bit about the reuse of Mare Island as a port, a public port with the authority of a public port to create jobs. Good evening, my name is Tony Summers, and my wife Denise and I, we moved here to Vallejo from Berkeley uh, for, and been here since for 19 years now. I have three wonderful daughters, uh, Tierra, Taylor, and Lauren. And uh, my father happened to have worked at Mare Island as a painter sandblaster for many, many years, and it, it was actually due to the asbestos that um, his life was taken. But uh, <clears throat> currently I work as a um, job placement specialist at Michaels Transportation and uh, work as part of the management team. And it's a thriving small business here in the city. And in my position, I actually help keep our company fiscally responsible and balanced, as well as I have the benefit of putting people to work every day. And Due to my capacity as establishing relationships, I have a 15-year background as a community organizer, and it happened to be with the same organization that President Obama uh, was trained in. I'm serious about public safety, and because of the relationship building, we currently work with the Solano County uh, Sheriff's Department as well as with probation, and we are training uh, formerly incarcerated persons and soon to train incarcerated persons with job skills and to give the persons hope as well as to keep our streets safe. And uh, <clears throat> lastly, I'm also a pastor of a young congregation in North Vallejo in, North, in the Country Club Crest in particular. And uh, we do outreach where we feed nearly 120 families every month. And so I will not tell you so much about what I will do, but I want you to know what I am doing, and it will be uh, natural attrition as time goes on. So I would certainly appreciate your vote, and thank you very much for this opportunity. Good evening, my name is Pippin Dew, and I have lived in the area for over 25 years. I chose to buy my first home in Vallejo and raise my daughter here. I am a local realtor and chairwoman of the Vallejo Chamber of Commerce. I've gotten involved in my community through Leadership Vallejo, the Vallejo Business Alliance, the Vallejo Education and Business Alliance, the Solano Association of Realtors, and I served on the steering committee and was the facilitator for the Public Safety Committee for the Participatory Budgeting Project. As a mother and a business owner, I'm concerned about our city's public safety and the shortage of police officers on the streets. Our streets need repairs, we have blighted areas and abandoned buildings, we have a high unemployment rate, and the highest number of residents living in poverty in the county. However, we have very limited resources and are facing structural budget deficits in the next fiscal year. As chairwoman for the Vallejo Chamber of Commerce, I know much of this can be addressed by generating revenues and supporting existing businesses to expand, which is the fastest way to create new jobs. We need to capitalize on our highly skilled labor force and our higher education institutions that are located right here in Vallejo. Through my work at the Chamber, I have become well versed on where the opportunity for development lies in Vallejo. Mare Island, the waterfront, downtown, and the fairgrounds all have so much potential, but they do not come without their challenges. Over the years, I have been working hard through the Chamber to build relationships within the business community to foster strong, stable economic growth and development, create jobs, and increase revenues to the city. More jobs and improved public safety is key in continuing our forward progress and momentum. As your council member, I pledge to be relentless in the pursuit of sustainable economic growth and development with increased safety for our businesses and families so that we may all prosper and enjoy the quality of life in Vallejo. I would be honored to have your vote. Good evening. My name is Herman Woody Blackwell. I have my lovely wife, Carmen. 
We bought a home here six years ago. Initially, I possess a BA degree in business administration, my alma mater is Sonoma State University. I also possess extensive experience, both public and private sector, in the area of policy administration and employment. I'm running for city council because I, I'm convinced that I can help Vallejo navigate his way out of poverty. You see, poverty is the number one problem embracing our communities. And along with poverty, poverty goes hand in hand with, with crime. If we want to reduce crime, we must reduce poverty. Another reason I'm running for city council is, is I'm, there's been a groundswell of, of citizens that, that, have, that have, a, have the perception that city government is not responsive to their needs, does not address their, their concerns and problems. And we need to change this, you see. Uh, it's fitting and proper that we, we address their needs because after all, the citizens write the checks. I'm talking about that they do this through their prop property tax contributions that drops right into the general fund. You see, this is the, the general fund. This is the funding source that subsidizes every job, every salary in all the city departments. So it's, it's long overdue. When they come down here to the city hall, they, 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 don't, they don't need to be dismissed. They need to be celebrated. And that is the reason why I'm running for city council. Vote for me, Herman Blackwell. <clears throat> well, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Jess Malgapo, and I'm currently a member of the Vallejo City Council. I am married to Gloria Malgapo. She's out there in the audience. We've been blessed with two daughters and uh, five beautiful grandkids. Um, but before I continue, I want to thank the organizers of this event, the NAACP, the African American Alliance, uh, and Vallejo Together. Thank you for putting this event together. My family and I moved to Vallejo in 1981, mostly as a result of my Navy assignments. Uh, I've been stationed on ships, homeported in the local area, and as a young lieutenant, I was the controller of the Navy Combat Systems Technical Schools Command at Mare Island, which we now know as Turo University. Upon retirement from the military uh, in 2000, I joined a Fortune 500 company, the Shaw Group, where I work as a project accountant, and I held this job for 10 years. Uh, which gave me ample experience in uh, private industry. I learned that the management principles are pretty much the same, whether you're in the military or, or private industry. But there's one distinct difference. In the, in the military, the, uh, the bottom line is to be combat ready at all times. In private industry, we strive to be profitable at all times. Well, the city of Vallejo is a service organization. And so our bottom line here is to be able to provide you the best service possible. Um, and so as you look at these dedicated citizens uh, vying for your vote, I would hope that uh, if you're an, an absentee voter uh, in October or you, you like to go to the polls in November, I would hope that you would choose me as one of your uh, uh, candidates uh, to be uh, re-elected so I could extend my term in office. Thank, Thank you. you. Good evening. My name is Liette Meitzenheimer. I would also like to thank the organizations for putting this forum together so that the people can come out and learn about who their candidates are for City Council. I've been a resident in Vallejo for 27 years. I raised my son here. and He also attended public schools. I have been active in the community for the last 17 years. In the work that I've done here, I've been serving for 13 years on the Greater Vallejo Recreation District as on the Board of Directors. I also have served for 17 years for the, uh, for the Vallejo Alcohol and Tobacco Policy Coalition, which is a group of concerned citizens to uh, working toward decreasing the amount of alcohol and tobacco related harm in their neighborhood. I also served for 10 years for the, on the City of Vallejo's Human Relations Commission. So my work here in Vallejo has brought me together with a diverse group of people, 
different ideas and varying ideas on how to move the city forward, but the common thread was is that we learned to work together because one person can make small change, but we can work together and make big change. I am running for city council because of the fact that I love this city. I moved here by choice and I remain here by choice. I've learned to learn to uh, find the issues that were in Vallejo are not different from other cities, but we do have our unique problems. The work that I've done through Vallejo Alcohol, I'm sorry, through Greater Vallejo Recreation District has given me the knowledge and ability to hit the floor running and to help the city move forward. So I hope that you will vote for me on November. Thank you. Good evening and thank you for this opportunity to share our views with the voters. Um, I'm Katie Meissner and I'm running for city council because this is Vallejo's time to shine. We're out of bankruptcy and we've made great strides in the last year. I know what's good about Vallejo and I know I can help make our city great. I have more than 20 years of financial experience, financial management experience, with oversight of budgets of up to $25 million. I know how to generate revenue and I know how to spend limited taxpayer funds with wise choices. So time and again, we've heard promises from our state and federal representatives, mostly during elections. And then they return to their more powerful constituencies, wine country or Contra Costa County. Look at the mothball fleet. We've heard assurances that Vallejo would get some of the ship breaking, but the feds discovered they could make more money selling the ships for scrap or breaking them in Texas. Vallejo gets to clean the ships before they're towed somewhere else. Our assembly member approved a new state law that allows garbage from Contra Costa County to be dumped here in Solano County. Washington abandoned Mare Island in 1996 and we've been left mostly on our own. And now we're being promised that we can count on the federal government, a government stuck in partisan gridlock, huge deficits, and cutting budgets through sequestration. But here it is election time and we're hearing promises again. What's that saying? Fool me once, shame on me. Fool, you, fool me, oops, I said it wrong. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. So instead of making campaign promises, I ask you to look at my record. I've got the green sheets in the back. I've been a volunteer and community advocate for the 13 years that I've lived here with no financial gain. My husband and I moved here in 2000. I lead by example. I attend meetings, contribute ideas, and work with others to get things done. My community involvement and financial experience will make sure we get the safe neighborhoods that we deserve and the good city services to match. And I know we can do this on our own. I'd be honored to work hard for you, and I would be honored to have your vote Thank on you. November 5th. Thank you. Okay, so now, now we're going to start the question round. Can you hear me? Okay. We're going to start the question round. Candidate Meissner. The city of Vallejo has a homeless problem. Do you think that the city has a responsibility to address the problem? Why or why not? Oh, it's uh, Meissner, Katie Meissner. I'm sorry. Well, let me, okay, stop. Let me apologize up front for any name that I don't get right from standing here. Okay. Well, the city, um, does have some responsibility uh, as people might not realize that the county, the county of Solano uh, is responsible for um, uh, human services, social services, they have the social workers, they have the money, uh, they get the money for that from the federal government. Um, so the city really needs to, the city cannot afford to deal with the homeless problem on their own. Uh, there's a variety of issues with homeless people. There's um, people who've lost their homes and their jobs. There's people that have uh, drug and alcohol problems, uh, mental health problems. So it's a complicated issue. Uh, and I think the only way to tackle it is for the city to partner with the county. Um, we have some resources. Uh, rather than spending money on moving people from place to place, it might be better to look at, a, at some kind of uh, setup where they can, they can uh, be on their, in one area where they can get services. But again, the city cannot do it by themselves or ourselves. We just don't have the funds. So partnering with other people, with the county, maybe even the, with the state, uh, is most important. Um, and uh, so that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Candidate Shively, how do you think the council should try to fix the homeless problem? 
Well, unfortunately or fortunately, my answer is not going to be very much different than the one you just heard. Uh, I would like to say that City of Vallejo can do more when it comes to helping the homeless, but the funds are simply not there. Also, the county does get money from the state for health and social services. So the main responsibility rests with the county. It would be a really good idea if the county and the city were to partner. Um, I think the city could offer the county more upfront, more, uh, I don't want to say sympathy, but empathy, because we are with this group every day. The county is not. They're removed. And uh, unfortunately for us, that gives them a perspective that is kind of aloof and kind of different. They're not uh, looking at what happens as a result of their action or inaction on a daily basis. So the only way really to address this is to have the county step up to its responsibility. It has the money. And for the city to provide in-kind services in the way of staff, it's the only way we can afford it. Thank you. <laughs> Candidate Blackwell, Mare Island, the land of supposed opportunity and potential economic growth for Vallejo, yet it is mostly an abandoned space. What would you, as a council member, do to make the island an important asset for Vallejo? Well, initially, initially we, we need to make economic development a priority and paramount uh, uh, concern and effort in order to make Mare Island fruitful. What I like, like to do is I like to see manufacturing concerns, industrial manufacturing concerns there. Um, the, these are five, Fortune 500 corporations that have the ability to have large employees, large number of employees. And one way to attract these, these Fortune 500 corporations is to, is to make Vallejo the lowest sales use rate tax in the Bay Area. Richmond did this and it was very effective. Fortune 500 corporations bypassed Oakland and San Francisco and went to Richmond because they had a tremendous savings in their sales rate use tax. We should do the same here and make ours the lowest, thereby recruiting the Fortune 500 corporations. I have, a, <clears throat> excuse me, I have an extensive portfolio in Fortune 500 corporations. See, I was executive corporate uh, recruiter, headhunter, and I used to staff a lot of the Fortune 500 corporations, and I know for a fact that they're looking for uh, 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 facilities such as Mare Island to do their manufacturing. And I think that this should be a paramount concern. Our economic director should have this, have this get it done attitude, playing for, playing for keeps so we can go ahead and make this community profitable and, prosper, and prosperous. Thank you. Thank you. Candidate Mapalo, what community organizations are you a member of and what is your role? Did you say community organizations, ma'am? Yes, sir. All right. Um, I'm a past president of the Rotary Club of Manila South and uh, the Rotary Club of Jakarta, uh, but not here in Vallejo, ma'am. So I'm not a member of any com civic uh, club here in Vallejo. Okay, thank you. Do you attend city council meetings? Um, unfortunately, I haven't attended any council meeting yet. Thank you. Candidate Summers, after the first year of participatory budgeting, the community voted and the council approved some or pulled some of the projects. PB will be back for a second round. In your opinion, what in the process can be refined or changed to ensure that the council honors the community vote? That was a long one. Is that okay? <laughs> yes, it is. Um, I think the people that have engaged in the PB process have stepped up and shown their desire to make Vallejo the best city it can be. And I think with the council 
and the Vallejo leadership working with the PB team that has uh, been willing to serve the city better. Uh, from that dialogue and being accountable one to another, I think we can continue to move the process forward. Um, and again, there has been some good ideas. We certainly want to um, strengthen what we've done in the city um, through the process. And as long as we continue to hold one another accountable from the council and the community, it makes for a better city. Thank you. Candidate Du, what is your opinion on that question? So I served on the steering committee um, for participatory budgeting. And um, there, and I was also the facilitator for the public safety committee. And so I got to go through the whole process and see, you know, what the challenges were. And um, initially there were 800 ideas submitted by the public. And, um, and those ideas were given to city staff first to review. Um, now, considering how limited our staff resources are, they just kind of gave a cursory glance at them. And so uh, then the ideas came back to the steering committee and then we took it to the individual committees and tried to um, you know, refine them, prioritize them, and um, prepare them to be resubmitted, um, you know, a condensed list uh, to the city staff. And then, but then again, city staff is so limited in their availability of time that, um, and, the, and the communications between staff and the uh, participatory budgeting project was um, not as optimal as it could have been. So going forward, we're extending the process to allow for, um, first of all, the timing in the year of when the staff will be reviewing these um, ideas so that they will be able to focus on them more, um, you know, with more focused intent and make sure that what they send back to the committees and say, yeah, we think these are feasible actually are feasible, that they've had the time to fully vet each idea so that when it goes on the ballot, we know that if it's voted for and approved, that it will be implemented. Thank you. Candidate Brother Oligra. The city council has been divided politically and philosophically and subject to personal attacks. If elected, what would you do to bring about a working order and stop the personal attacks? Thank you for the question. What I would do first is have the council come together and really sit down, invite the facilitator to facilitate that process, and really ask each and every one of the members what do they want for Vallejo, and come to agreement that, you know, despite the different agendas, that we need to remind each other that we are here to serve all of Vallejo, not our individual personal agendas, okay? Because there's so much at stake. My skills in team building and consensus building would be beneficial in this process. I'm also used to dealing with crisis and dealing with opposing views. So I hope to contribute that. That is, I am trained um, in counseling actually. I'm trained to listen, and I'm also trained bringing people together. And that has been proven in the work that I've done in nonprofits and in the 30 years that I've worked as a volunteer in this community. So that's what I would propose. And in the hope that each member will come to agreement and come together, that we are all here to help Vallejo move forward because it cannot continue the way it is. It has polarized this community and it's not good for Vallejo. And that would be what I would do first. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Candidate Pl Platzer. In the past, the Native American community has voiced this concern over our schools using Indian nicknames for school teams. This is now becoming a hot button issue nationally. If elected, how would you address this concern, or would you? I don't know how much as a council we can really 
have an impact on that issue. I think as a culture, we need to move away from that direction. We've made strides in other areas, and we have to be more aware and sensitive to cultural groups and the things that we say. Most of the things we say are semantics and have double meanings. We don't need to use that kind of identification tag for a sports team. It's, but I don't think I can really get a sports team to change their name. Thank you. Kennedy Johnson. The crime situation in Vallejo has escalated. It is a known fact that Vallejo has a reduction of police and fire personnel. What is your vision of improving this situation? Thank you for the question. I think one of the best ways to get started with uh, relieving our city of uh, the crime is to develop uh, better relations between the uh, public safety departments in our community. Uh, I believe that our community have a lot of uh, great ideas. They would like to be heard, and I think that if our uh, public safety departments took out uh, time to listen to what the community is asking, I think we will make uh, great strides in that direction. I do want to commend uh, the police department for the efforts that they've been uh, putting forward uh, so far, but we still have more work to do. Uh, I think with uh, also uh, putting together a strategy to uh, protect our seniors in the downtown area so that they can uh, be more mobile and enjoy our beautiful downtown. Uh, I think that would uh, uh, be a great idea as well. Thank you. Thank you. You would have enjoyed this next question. Candidate Mogapo. Two very important groups in Vallejo are the seniors and the youth. The seniors have at least one place to go in Vallejo. Do you believe that our youth need a safe place to go, and should this be a city priority? Yeah, thank you, Leah. Uh, absolutely. I, I think that the seniors and the youth are uh, not neglected, but out of necessity, we've not been able to focus on the seniors and the youth. Uh, there's a program that's not well known to the public uh, which is the CDBG lunch program. Uh, it's federal funds, but through the Housing Authority, we allocate the funds. And what's happened was, uh, because in North Vallejo, uh, the provider of the meal, this is the congregational meal, this isn't meals delivered to your home. This is their one chance to gather and, and socialize and uh, have camaraderie. Uh, Betty Franks was the provider. She couldn't do it anymore. And the staff came to us and said, we're just going to take North Vallejo's money and divide it, up, divide it up amongst the remaining community centers. And I just had to put my foot down and said, no, we are not going to do that. So what we did is we set that money aside until we could find a provider, which we have found. Uh, uh, and they're going to be the Continental of uh, Omega. And so North Vallejo will continue to have their lunch program, the North Vallejo seniors. Um, as far as the young people, I mean, the city, remember the city is just now coming back from, uh, you know, going bankrupt in 08, uh, cutting employees uh, in 09, uh, living up with what we promised the courts we were going to do. And finally, we exited in uh, 2011. It's only this fiscal year, 2013 and 14, when we're experiencing a slight uptick in revenues at 4%. That's a projection. We don't know if that's going to materialize or not. But as the economy continues, as we continue to grow, and as funds become available, I can see opportunities for uh, programs for our, our youth. Uh, we have a ways to go, and, and unless our, our uh, finances uh, improve, uh, we're not going to be able to provide that kind of a service at the level that's expected by you to our seniors and our youth. Thank you. Candidate Meisenheimer. Vallejo has been determined to be the most diverse city in California, yet our workforce or our city commissions do not reflect this diversity. Do you believe 
It is the council's responsibility to find ways to recruit and encourage individuals to apply as a way to increase the applicant pool. Thank you. I think we've had that conversation for a while here in Vallejo. One of the things that we need to improve is communication and outreach in the community to reach out to people and let them know that the seats are available and that they should apply and why they should apply because sometimes people feel um, a little bit afraid of coming forward. They don't want to be out in public. They don't want to speak in front of the public. But I think once you are give them some orientation on what these commissions do and why it's important that they become a part of it, then they will uh, sign up and be um, um, part of the, the process. The city council can set policy as far as what the city should do as doing outreach. They can tell the city what they would like to see as far as how much they can do the outreach, how much funding goes out to do um, um, community um, uh, outreach so that they can bring these people in. A lot of the times we hear that people are not applying for the jobs, and so we need to find out why it is that people do not apply for them. We recently put together a group uh, with city council for the general plan. I was really um, kind of put off that the fact that we didn't have the diversity that I would think that we would have in the city. We have a lot of people that know how to move the city forward. They have ideas on what the vision should be for Vallejo, but they didn't apply for it. And I, I'm just questioning why it is that our citizens don't step up and, and put in for these positions because it's vital that we hear from all parts of the city. I think we need to do a better job of going out to the community. I think a lot of times we put things in the paper, we publicize it on the internet, and we expect people to come down to city council and hear what's going on. But I think we need to do a better job of going out to the community and reaching out to the groups that are already out there and having them build a coalition to help bring these people together and put the publicity out that's needed to have people join our commissions. So I think that we can all find a way to work together. I think there's always room for improvement. I'm hoping that the community would do more to uh, use their organizations to seek out the seats that are available and then bring somebody forward to sign up for those positions. Thank you. <laughs> Candidate, now I have a block, me, sir. In the past, there has been an interest in bringing a casino to Vallejo. This endeavor would enhance our economic base and offer the possibility of jobs and contribute to the city's general fund. If, a, if elected, is this an economic possibility that you would encourage the council to explore? Well, I think it would be, I think it's fine to explore it. I don't know necessarily if I would support a casino. Um, uh, a casino that's, uh, that doesn't include gambling, I mean, you have to be a sovereign nation uh, run by an Indian tribe, Native American tribe, in order to have a, a, a real casino. And Sovereign nations aren't, the rules of the United States aren't applicable. It's, a, it's like a different nation. And so there's, um, it's a complicated issue. We could look at it. I don't necessarily think it might be the right thing for us. Uh, as I understand, the, the taxes that we would get from it wouldn't be nearly as much as if we had other businesses over there on Mare Island. Um, and I just, uh, personally, I don't like gambling. I think it's a, um, I don't gamble myself because I never win. <laughs> so, and, I, and it preys on people. I used to work, when I was in college, I worked at a, a, it was like a Walgreens in the photo counter, and the people that came to buy lottery tickets were obviously the poorest people, and that was a hope for them, and they were spending good money on tickets that would, they were very, they had really no chance of winning. So I personally don't really like casinos myself. Um, and I would, I'd like to see the information, but I doubt I'd support it. Thank you. <laughs> Candidate Shiley, could you give us your take on that question? This is a question that's been going around Vallejo for a very, very long time. Actually, since 1996, when the uh, Navy Yard closed, one of the early proposals was for a casino. 
there are many aspects to it that are not quite as beautiful as you may think. One is, in order to have the land available, it takes years and years and years to work its way through the state requirements. It isn't something that we could wish for today and have tomorrow. So you have to consider, are we going to hold up keep in abeyance, land bank, land for years in the hope that something might be built there. We don't know if it ever would. Cities that have, or communities that have done this successfully do not recoup money through taxes. They have hammered out some very significant settlement agreements with whoever has the casino. Several years ago, there was a casino developer out here from Florida, and he looked at an appropriate location, if you're going to have one at all. He said, the north end of Mare Island? No. Absolutely not. His choice, and this was a professional in the business, was the intersection of I-80 and 37. And his choice for that was because of the visibility from the freeway. Also, it is privately owned land. Maybe the owners of that, if they chose to sell to a casino developer, would be willing to sit and wait for 10 to 12 years for the state to decide if, yes, we can go ahead or not. I do not think that's a good way to use the land on the north end of Mare Island. We've had it tied up with developers, three of them, ever since Mare Island closed, and not one of them has put a shovel in the ground yet. Thank you. <laughs> Kennedy Blackwell, what is your opinion in regards to the support of the LGBT and gay rights community and marriage equality? Initially, I'm going to state that I'm a Christian. And uh, I think that, well, I feel that they should not be uh, prevented. They should be allowed to have the same rights and privileges and, and, afford, and, and, and enjoy the rights and privileges that everyone in this country has. But as, as far as my religious belief, I, I stay with the, with the Bible on that. But I, I don't... I don't see in any way that they should be denied privileges. Thank you. Thank you. Candidate Platzer, do you feel that it's necessary for a city council member to have an opinion on LGBT and gay rights and marriage equality? It's probably more dangerous than necessary. <laughs> <coughs> But just as we have made great strides in the area of civil rights since the 1960s, and we've come as far as we have, I think we're coming a long way in the area of the LBGT community. I personally can't dictate, I don't think government should dictate what people do in their bedrooms. I don't think they should dictate what sort of legal relationships they enter into. I think we're moving the ship in a positive direction as far as the LGBT community goes. I let them do what they want, and I don't know how much as a council person I can actually encourage that, but I would certainly not discriminate on any basis founded in the fact that you are a part of that community. We're all in the same community in that sense. Thank you. <laughs> Candidate Berta Oligra. Vallejo has several grocery markets. However, South Vallejo, which some might consider one of our most neglected community areas, does not have a real grocery market. For some to go to a major store, it is un almost untainable. No car, no funds for bus transportation, if there is bus transportation. If elected, do you feel that this is a current concern that should be addressed, especially in light of all the other fast food folks we bring in? Thank you for the question. Yes, I will support a grocery in South Vallejo. In fact, I wish that Winkle had uh, 
you know, chosen South Vallejo to be the location of their store. Unfortunately, for whatever reason and many other reasons, they chose to withdraw their application. Uh, when I was working with the Downtown Youth Project with Youth and Family Services, that was already an issue. You know, this was like 20 years ago, and it's still an ongoing issue. And it's sad that, you know, we don't have any takers or anyone interested in opening a grocery store down south. And you know why? Because crime has not been addressed in this city. And I think unless we address the public safety issue in this community, no business would want to come to Vallejo. And that's why my priority really, if I am elected to the city council, is to address public safety and hire police officers to the authorized level. We are at the very, very low um, staffing ratio with the police, and that's very scary. I have children here, you have children, you have families and neighbors. And of course we have neighborhood poli neighbor, uh, community policing, we have neighborhood watch groups that you know, work and, and watch each other so that to curtail and suppress a crime and would-be burglaries and robberies, but that's not enough. We need police presence in this community now, not next year, we need it today. And I know that the city council had voted to hire 17 or 20 police officers in the next few months. That has to happen. And I know it's not going to happen right away because police academies and, and these police folks that we hire will need to be trained. So we need to really push. And if that, that is my agenda if I'm elected to the city council. So if crime is crime suppressed and uh, there's crime reduction in this community, public safety is addressed, then we can go out there and seek uh, businesses, grocery stores in particular, to come to South Vallejo. So I would like that, to see that happen. And that's my response. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Candidate Summers, can we have your response to that question? Do I need to read it again? Uh, if you will, please. Okay. It was long. <laughs> Vallejo has several grocery markets. However, South Vallejo, which some might consider one of our most neglected community, does not have a quote-unquote real grocery market. For some to go to a major grocery store, it's unattainable. No car, no funds, no bus transportation, or no bus. If elected, do you feel this concern should be addressed? Absolutely. Um, one of the things I certainly believe is that we have to take care of our indigent people in this city in every way that we can. Also, with the need for a grocery store in South Vallejo, um, I feel that as a council member, it is a part of our duty to actually go out and find businesses uh, to come to our wonderful city. We have to let people know the things that we are doing well and being able to attract the businesses to this community and to the city of Vallejo um, is only going to happen by us being very deliberate and intentional um, about going out and getting it done. I happen to work for, as I said, a thriving small business in Vallejo, uh, Michael's Transportation, I'm not ashamed to call it by name. And we know in order for that business to be successful, we have to build relationships uh, with other businesses, and that's something that I do on a regular basis, and I look forward to it. Um, and in fact, we're in conversation right now. I strongly supported the Solano 360 project, and we are in conversation with an organization now to potentially uh, bring a business here. And so it, we as council leaders and uh, city leaders, we must be very deliberate about finding opportunities uh, that will support all of our communities, and, and particularly with South Vallejo needing a grocery store and uh, bringing viable um, businesses here where persons can have livable wages, raise their families, and lastly, I'll say this, my daughter's in college at Sac State. I want her to be able to say, I'm coming back home to Vallejo to work. I don't want her have to have to leave the area. Thank you. Thank you. Candidate Meitzenheimer, let's go back to the question on crime. The crime situation in Vallejo has escalated. It is a known fact that Vallejo has a reduction of police and fire personnel. What is your vision for improving this? 
As stated before, the City Council has recently voted to increase the number of police officers that we are having in Vallejo. The last City Council meeting we saw another six officers were recently put on. So we, they are working toward rebuilding the numbers that we have. It's not an easy process. The people have to be vetted they, and those new ones have to go through a training process. One of the things that has really helped Vallejo is that the people in the community have become involved. We've had more neighborhood watch groups. We've had more organizations that are trying to help and keep eyes on the city. We've had organizations trying to work with uh, people so that they don't go back to the prison system and they're not c committing the same crimes over and over again. I think we really need to start looking together as a community on how it is that we can bring some of these crime issues down. One of the things that happens when the economy goes away is that the police department takes away some of the most important um, groups of people, the departments that work with the community, the crime suppression unit and the beat health. Those are the first line people that go out to the community and get to know the people in the community and find out what the issues are and try to identify ways that they can help that community. And when we lose our economy, those are the first departments that are cut by the police department. Our current police chief is trying to find a way now to bring people on so that they start filling those jobs again and that they can do more outreach. One of the things that we faced recently with the recent uh, officer-related uh, shootings was that there is a known historical distrust in some communities with the police department. I think we really need to start building that relationship back because the police work for those communities as well. And one of the things that they wanted to do is to know the officer that was in their beat so that when they saw that officer they could talk to the person and, and tell them what was going on and have that um, build that relationship. When we uh, we're faced with a crisis with all of the upheaval with the police officer related shootings. I put together a group along with the Department of Justice, the Police Department and City of Vallejo, and we went out to those communities and we talked about issues that concerned them. Chief Crines had already started initiating some of the changes that they had requested and he's continuing to initiate those changes. So the best thing for the community to do is to be our participant and, and come up and talk to the police department, be part of the groups that meet with the police department and so we can find ways to work together to improve the quality of life in our neighborhoods. Thank you. So I was having a conference up here and we're going to flip the script a little bit because from the questions that we have, we think that we've got a good view of your views. And so we're going to flip the script for 15 minutes and we're going to take three questions from the audience if someone in the audience has a question. Could you come? Okay, it cannot be about what we already ask and we are going to be respectful. Oh wait, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, I work for the city. Hopefully that's not a bad thing in asking a question here tonight, but if, if it is, I'll find out tomorrow. Um, <laughs> So, my question, I, did you, I came in a little late, did you already answer a question about the homeless? Yeah. Oh, okay, so, okay. And then the last thing is, did you answer a question about how you feel how Vallejo looks and appears uh, uh, affects economic development? And what, you, what your thoughts are about that? would like to answer that question. Mr. Johnson, Candidate Johnson, our big pardon. Oh, thank you. You know, uh, when you're coming and going from Vallejo, you look at the different exits and you see a lot of dry grass, a lot of paper and trash along the uh, side of the roads. And so I, I think that we need to have a focus on the aesthetics of our exits so that uh, people will want to come to our city. When you, you go down to the South Bay and you look around down there, you see beautiful exits. A beautiful exit makes you want to enter into that city. And so for us, we need to start there, start on the, the outskirts 
off of the roads, off of the highways, and uh, beautify those exits, and then start working our way in. Because we do want to attract uh, more uh, families to come here. We want to attract businesses. And so if our city isn't, uh, if the people see that we're not taking care of our city the way we should be, then they're not going to want to come and be a part of it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? May I please address that question? Yes, you may. Um, everything is about perspective. And if we look at our city from a negative, desolate uh, perspective, that's what we see. But I just want to tell you what I see. When I come across um, the Carquinez Bridge and I look to the left and I see uh, California Maritime Academy, the third largest producer of mechanical engineers in the nation, that excites me. When I'm coming from 80 uh, East and coming down into Vallejo and I look to the right and I'm able to see the water and I'm able to see uh, Six Flags and I'm able to see um, so many wonderful things in our city. If I look to the left, I see hang gliding on certain days because of the landscape of Vallejo. And it doesn't matter which artery you come from. If you come from, um, from Nevada and you come past Mare Island, and I know that's an eyesore when you first see it, but on Mare Island sits Turo University, the number one osteopathic medicine university in the nation. We have to celebrate and lift up what we do have. We certainly can add to it, but we can never neglect and omit what we have now. That's what makes us attractive, and that's what we have to build on to make our city better. Thank you. Thank you. Kennedy Shively, did I overlook you? I'm sorry. Thank you. Vallejo used to have a highly successful neighborhood revitalization program. It was so successful that the people who were involved in it had speaking engagements all over the United States. We did such a good job that everyone else in the country wanted to see how we did it. Part of that program was providing dumpsters to neighborhoods free of charge through Recology, our garbage company. The people who participated in the program were volunteers. They would go out to various neighborhoods and help the residents clean up. There was nothing that was too big to put in the dumpster. We had a lot less illegal dumping while we were doing that. And the residents of the neighborhood learned what they needed to do to keep their neighborhood attractive. This was not a case of going out and doing it for them. It was doing it with them and teaching them. That program needs to be reinstituted. Very definitely as a success. Thank you. Hi, I'm Kathy Hill, and um, I work with the NAACP, and we have been going to the Solano County um, Health Department to be working with them as far as bringing a awareness and education program when it comes to the chlamydia and gonorrhea rates among our youth here in Vallejo. I want to know what the city council possible members here would do to help address the fact that we don't want to become Vallejo known as the hot spot for chlamydia and gonorrhea. What, is you, what would you do as city council members to help with, camp, with this campaign to defeat it? Candidate Mike Muthner. Uh, so that's a great question. The city council doesn't have uh, health services as part of their mandate, um, and there's no funding. But that doesn't mean that the city council can't partner with the county and maybe even the school district uh, to bring education uh, to the young folks uh, who are out there and getting these diseases that are going to affect their lives forever. Um, so the city has um, space. We might be able to provide some space. 
uh, and the, the school district with the education, hopefully the school district, I'm not quite sure what they do as far as uh, sex education in the schools, but that, that's a great place to provide that education. And then the county has the staff. They have the health services department. So partnership is always the best way to go. It helps us save money, and it brings the different uh, expertise from the different areas. Thank you. Candidate Meisenheimer, is your light on? Go ahead. As a board member on GVRD, one of the committees that we worked on is the interagency committee, which is a committee that's formed with the city, the school district, the community college, and the other departments in the city, the San Infled, uh, and with GVRD. And one of the things that I pushed for on that committee is to bring the county as a partner in that interagency group because a lot of the things that we're facing, the social issues that we have and the funding that sources that we're needing comes directly from the county. So I couldn't figure out why the county wasn't at that table to talk about partnerships. I think the best thing that we could do is to form partnerships with businesses in the school district and the health community as well as the county to try to find ways to bring funding in to, for those programs. It's not just STDs that we should be alarmed about. We have a high rate of diabetes for our children and asthma. We have one of the highest rates of asthma in the city of Vallejo. And so we need to find out why is it that we have those problems, why are those numbers so high, and what the city can do as a whole to improve that. I think that would be the responsibility of a city council person is to have that study so that you can, when you're making your vision for Vallejo, when we're talking about our general plan update, that that's included because health and environment are the two issues that we really need to improve in the city of Vallejo. Thank you. Um, Candidate Thank you. Thank you. The other than, you know, asking the county to do their part in terms of health issues, um, we need to partner with our nonprofit agencies. We have several in this community. I know because I've been involved in community work and nonprofit agencies for 30 years. We have Planned Parenthood. We have Youth and Family Services. We have Aldea. We have children's programs and that we have children's nonprofit agencies that focus on these issues. We also have a health clinic at Bethel High School. I know because my son attends Bethel High School. And those are confidential sessions that they can have with, with the students. Also, um, sex education is already a part of the curriculum at the middle school in Vallejo's public schools. So we need to strengthen that curriculum and perhaps make some changes as it relates to uh, sexually transmitted diseases. Again, education and prevention is something that I've supported in the past and I will continue to support that. Strengthening the interagency collaboration is important. We have, I was a part of that interagency committee in the past, but it needs to take action you know, we sit in meetings and we discuss all kinds of stuff, but nothing, not much happens, again, because of limited resources. But now the school district uh, superintendent and the school board um, are actively out there making sure that they deliver education services to the kids. Uh, also, the city council, we need, to, we need to do outreach with the school district. I know that they're separate entities and they have their own governing boards. But the city council, and I in particular, will do that because I care about our youth. I have a young, young teenage boy. Many of you here have grandchildren and teenage kids. They need to be educated, and we want, if we really want to do what's best for Vallejo, we need to do more for our youth, and that is to engage them, work with the clubs at the high schools, because they're there, and they have their own leaders and I'd like to actually uh, revive the Youth Commission. It's been inactive for the past year and a half. So we can also start with that. Thank you. Thank you. Can I, can I stop for just a second? Do the candidates feel that they gave their statements and we don't have to worry about that at this point? When you introduced yourself, do you feel like you gave the statement you wanted to give? Okay, then we'll go with, I think it was candidate Johnson, and then candidate Summers, to, in response to that question. I'll keep mine. Uh... Mine will be short and simple. Uh, there were some really great uh, views from uh, the other candidates, uh, but one of the 
main focuses should be on reversing the uh, K through uh, five uh, school years and, and taking it back to K through six. These children aren't mature enough to uh, go into the higher grades at such a young age. If you look back at the numbers back in the 80s and compare them to uh, the teenage pregnancies and sexually transmitted diseases that we see today, you'll see a dramatic increase. And so I think that if uh, we can uh, reverse that and go from K through 6 and uh, 7th through 9th, and 10th through 12th, I think we'll find a lot of uh, changes. Uh, I do encourage the two entities, the council and the school boards to be able to communicate. If I'm uh, elected as a council member, I will, if I have an idea that will be befitting to the school board, I'll share that with that constituent. And because we are here together, we all care about our city, and so we should work together in solving the issues that our city faces. Thank you, Candidate Summers and then Candidate Shively. And I have one more question that I was requested to ask of one of the candidates, so go ahead. So in response to the question about our children with the, the STDs, it is so important that we come from behind the desk and connect with our children, connect with our community, um, strongly support uh, Dr. Bishop and the school district in every way. We cannot afford to operate from a hands-off perspective when it comes to our children. I encourage uh, the nonprofits to uh, certainly uh, do a little bit more, even persons from the faith community. Um, for instance, our own church community um, in North Vallejo, we've actually partnered with the school, not for uh, any kind of proselytizing or any of that, but to have a presence so we can talk to the children. There's so many that just need somebody to encourage them. And by uh, having that opportunity to, to partner with the school district, to partner with children from the city council perspective, as long as we are deliberate about giving our children the proper education and giving them a choice, giving them the right choices, um, they will uh, be encouraged and make the right decisions. I also want us to continue to reach out to Toronto University that are setting up uh, different um, clinics across town. I think we need to continue to work on that. And lastly, um, in as much as the county has the funding, I think it would be a good move for us to create our own uh, health and human services division in the city and hold the county directly uh, uh, responsible for working with us so persons can get the services they need throughout the city of Vallejo. Thank you. Thank you. Kennedy Shively. Thank you. In addition to all of the other agencies that have already been named, I would draw in Kaiser Hospital and Sutter Solano. They both have extensive education programs already set up. They have the staff for it. And there's a high percentage of people in Vallejo who belong to Kaiser. So they know where it is. They would know where to go. And if we collaborated with all of the other entities that have been named, I think we could have a highly successful program. Thank you. Candidate Du, I guess some folks want your opinion on this question. It's the grocery store question. Oh, okay. Vallejo, do, do I need to redo it? Sure. Okay, Vallejo has several grocery stores. However, South Vallejo, which some might consider one of our most neglected communities, does not have a real grocery store. Mm -hmm. For some to go to a major grocery store, it's unattainable. No car, no funds, no bus transportation, or no bus. Mm -hmm. If elected, do you feel this concern should be addressed? Yeah, absolutely. And I feel that part of the challenge for um, the city is that 
we don't have the investment from the business community, the global business community that we need. Um, and so we don't have, um, you know, grocery stores in South Vallejo, uh, retail centers that, um, you know, are more effective and efficient to serving the whole community. Um, and so, in my opinion, the best way to fix that challenge is to aggressively market our assets. The city of Vallejo has the highest skilled labor force per capita in the entire Bay Area. We also have the lowest cost of doing business of any city in the Bay Area. Add to that the fact that we have the best location. We can draw from Sacramento, San Francisco, and San Jose and leverage that location. Um, and so, you know, I've been working uh, very hard through the chamber to, um, to promote the, the assets that the city of Leo does have. Um, working with um, uh, having the Senator, Senator Wolk come on October 31st to speak to us about um, the governor's proposal for um, manufacturing tax credits for local businesses so that manufacturing companies will stay here in California instead of going to other areas like Texas. Um, and um, specifically, some of that tax credit is specifically set aside for small businesses. Um, and looking at how, in conjunction with Lambra and Enterprise Zones, we can support our existing businesses and attract new businesses here. Um, and so when you start having, you know, as the economy changes, um, we're seeing it already in the um, home market. You know, prices have gone up 30% year to year in Solano County. And um, uh, as the economy continues to improve, if we right now start aggressively marketing what we have to offer, then we're going to start seeing that investment come in. And then we're going to start having choices of what we want in town instead of just, you know, okay, a casino idea or a port idea. We're going to have all kinds of choices so that we can say, okay, what is the highest and best use for the different areas of our city and how do we draw them here? Thank you. Thank you. Um, we're going to get you out by 8.30. I would like to take this time to compliment the candidates. We had two pages of questions, but you all were so thorough in your answers that it was like, I couldn't ask the next question because you had covered it before. And I hope that the audience got a good sense of exactly what your vision or your mission, mission is. And I really appreciate you coming. I appreciate the audience. I hope we satisfy your curiosity. I hope you have some facts to make some decent choices when you go or fill out that form. So thank you, um, African American Alliance members. Can I see you afterwards? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent thank you. moderator. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you.